Hey there, it's Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And uh, I, I hate to say it, but I I'm I'm quitting YouTube. Okay, well, not not really, but uh, I I'm quitting YouTube as I've been doing it so far. So uh, again, I apologize for the clickbait. Really, not that sorry, <laughs> because if you're here because of that, then you know mission accomplished. But it, it is kind of true because it's it's not going to be the way it used to be and trust me i have reasons and they're very good reasons and i think in the end you will actually like the channel better you will like these changes and it's going to provide better content for you all right so let's talk a bit about what this new direction for the channel is going to be First off, no more hard schedule. That's the main thing that I'm quitting. And that I really, I have quit. If you've been a longtime viewer or subscriber to my channel or even a patron, you would know that normally uh, in the past I had kept to a weekly schedule. Once I started taking YouTube seriously, I started doing a weekly schedule. I, every week, new video. And then for a while I did two videos a week. And that just about drove me insane. But... Doing those two videos a week really drove my engagement way up, and that's when my channel experienced its uh, you know fastest period of growth. But I just simply can't do that anymore, and really, I just don't have the ability to do everything else I'm trying to do and be able to get those two videos out a week. It's just not going to be feasible. So what I'm going to focus on are my longer term projects, not just like here, here's the demo of the week. No more of that. We're going to still have little things here and there, but mainly the channel is going to focus on the different long term projects I have going on and sharing my progress with that and you know, doing demonstrations. Now, that may mean I have multiple videos in a week to show some really rapid progress is taking place, or it might mean uh, a couple weeks uh, go by and yeah, you're not going to hear anything. But that's uh, it, it's okay, right? But I know a lot of folks came here for the tutorial series I had. And I'm, I'm not necessarily stopping the tutorial series, but I'm definitely at the point with both of my main series for both the Commander X-16 and the ZX Spectrum, I've hit a, a sort of an ending point with both of those in terms of what I'm able to really do. And for different reasons. With the Commander X-16, I've hit a point where my original videos are uh, largely uh, obsolete now. Uh, first off, they did not have the greatest quality, and uh, they also are representative of uh, pre-prototype versions of what the Commander X-16 has uh, become since then. Uh, and so a lot of those demos, uh, the example programs in there, a lot of them just plain don't work anymore. So that's something that needs to be sort of reconsidered and we'll talk more about that later and with the zx spectrum i'm i've really hit a point where i've covered all the basics and i need to get into more advanced concepts but i am still very much a beginner in terms of doing zx spectrum development so my ability to really provide teaching materials for that it's pretty limited, so uh, those things are going to have to get back burnered for a while or sort of just uh, silently wrapped up. But the main thing I really need to do is finish some more games. It's in the name of my channel. Slithy Games is the branding that I have for all of the games that I create for all these different platforms. And I, I really need to get back to creating these games. It's the whole reason I created this YouTube channel in the first place was to show off what I was doing for these different games. And I am definitely getting back to that. Let's talk now about the number one project, which is Rocket 88. This did sort of come out as a like, oh, this is just kind of a thing I'm playing with. But it, it turned out to have a, a lot of engagement and a lot of interest from the community. And it also comes on the heels of some of my videos 
that start looking at FPGA and doing Verilog programming and things like that. That's really what uh, a lot of folks are very interested in uh, these days, especially as a lot of these FPGA dev boards are becoming more e readily available uh, in this post-COVID time. So my first uh, thing I need to do is finish the Verilog core for the Rocket 88. I've already um, implemented quite a bit of it in Verilog, uh, but I, I still have quite a bit left to go. And once I do have that, and I'll at the same time be getting an emulator uh, for it, just a, uh, to run in a modern computer, Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever. And the same goes for the assembler, a multi-platform uh, for modern computers, and be able to emulate a very simple sort of uh, terminal-based version of a Rocket 88 computer and be able to create uh, programs in assembly language for that. And of course, we'll, the tool set will evolve from there. And then uh, one of the main things I want to do is create a single board computer using a, a cheap FPGA dev board, like that one I got from China that I had shown off on my channel previously. That is a, a really good use for one of these boards. It's like, hey, let's make it a really simple single board computer and the, the great benefit of Rock 88 is that the uh, rights for doing it are all going to be uh, totally free. It is a free and open source core. There is nothing that is proprietary in it. And so you can do whatever you want with it. If you don't like the way it works, you change it. it you are free to do that. It is a specifically non-commercial retro enthusiast core for the open source community. Do whatever you want with it, except say it's yours and try to sell it. <laughs> That's it. And then the next step and sort of a, well, a step that's going to be happening at the same time is uh, creating, it's really going to be the definitive version of the Rocket 88 computer, which will be a Mr. Core. And uh, my uh, previous video, I uh, showed how I uh, built my uh, Mr. Multi-System setup and there is a uh, a lot of uh, open source Mr. Cores out there for real systems, but I'm going to be creating one for a system that does not actually exist. So the, the first version of that Mr. Computer will be very similar to that SBC version where it could just have a Duart that connects to a terminal and we have to have on the Mr. Core sort of a... Uh, uh, a fake uh, terminal screen. But because it's a mister, it's uh, very simple to create whatever kind of graphics that you want to have on there, keyboard interface, controller interface, all, all these different things we can uh, get in there. So it can be more of a proper computer. And then this is not just like, oh, it works for this dev board. And then you got to change things around to make it work on another dev board. Now, ev everybody's got the DE10 Nano based Mr. And it's a core that they can then download and, and just run on there alongside all their other cores for old computers and consoles and arcade machines. It'll work just like one of those. And that's what I'm really gonna be focusing on. But of course then, the software. <laughs> to actually have software uh, that can be run on that Mr. Core, not necessarily a whole operating system or anything like that, but just some basic demos to encourage people to try to develop for it. But again, this is it's going to be fully hackable top to bottom so that if you want to change the instruction set on the processor, you can do that. You want to change uh, the way the, the core deals with a video on the, the Mr. Core can have anything from, uh, you know, a Commodore pet to like a PlayStation one. It's got all these, uh, all this capability and you can just make it as uh, fancy or as simple as you want it to be at uh, whatever features you want. So that's going to be the really the biggest focus of my channel going forward is this top to bottom design of a computer system that can exist virtually. Uh, I, that's something that really appeals to me. 
hopefully that appeals to you. And if you're one of the subscribers in this channel, you're probably the kind of person that would enjoy seeing how something like that would happen and then being able to get involved with a, a project like that. And of course, my uh, the big game that I've been working on for a long time is Cavi's Quest. And of course, this is for the Commander X-16. And yes, the Commander X-16 lives. If you had uh, actually been to the Vintage Computer Festival in Chicago uh, a couple weeks ago, you would have seen not one but two different prototypes of the Commander X-16 in full operation. And it is uh, now at the point where the uh, final production version is uh, getting created. It's, I mean, technically still a prototype. This is a, a low rate production type thing. But if uh, this uh, latest revision works, there is a full intention of basically uh, sealing that and uh, start running these off, of course. We have to make sure that there are parts available for doing that because there are some chips on there. They're, they're not like unobtainium by any stretch, but they are still fairly uh, low supply and uh, long periods of uh, waiting for uh, production to get through because these are, are, are low priority items, these uh, simple 8-bit chips that are going into it. But... Mainly what I want to do is once that happens, and now that's really going to happen uh, sooner rather than later, is to have a free demo of Cavi's Quest available. So this is the first two zones. Uh, I've shown uh, like early rudimentary versions of what those uh, the levels look like that would be part of that demo. And to have a more polished version of that ready and available to download for free so you can play through that and then if uh, folks enjoy that then there would be a, a situation where we'd be doing some sort of crowdsourcing to actually finish the game because this is something that's going to require a uh, you know a team of people to to build uh, and it's going to have to be a team of people that are going to require payment to do that. So I, I'm not going to go to the expense of doing that on my own. It's only going to be done if there's sufficient interest from the community for this game to exist, because this is not a simple arcade game. This is going to be a full on like Sierra type adventure game. And uh, that requires a ton of artwork, music, and, and story building and all this stuff. And that is something that I, I really can't dedicate the time or the money to do that without knowing that people are actually going to want to buy that game in the long run. So uh, whether Cavi's Quest ever actually happens, we'll, we'll have to see. But I, I definitely want to have that demo out and we'll see we'll see how people react to that then i think it'll be a very cute game it'll be a nice uh a nice throwback to a sort of family friendly uh adventure games that uh sierra and, and lucas arts had uh, specialized in uh, and we're looking at sort of the late 80s early 90s uh, vintage of that in terms of the aesthetic and the the gameplay and, and all that so We'll, we'll see how what people think. So beyond on those first two projects, the the big thing is the the other games that I have uh, I've been putting on the back burner because I've been just trying to keep up with getting the content out there. And eventually, I will get back to both of these uh, games here: the Alice in Wonderland for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred and Pop, my uh, Puzzle Bobble clone for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And I, I do fully intend to finish both of those games that have been just kind of sitting there for over a year, each of them, uh, with me just, you know, working on other things and sort of chasing the YouTube algorithm to come up with different kinds of content to put up there. And like I said, I'm done with that. I'm just following what I'm going to do, get my uh, long-term projects done and some of these, uh, these other projects uh, bring them back to life, make them happen. And then uh, beyond these games, I have other platforms that I want to create for, including the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System and uh, other uh, new edition 
uh, retro computers like the Mega 65 and the ZX Spectrum Next, uh, both of which I find very interesting and hope to uh, acquire eventually. And in terms of the Spectrum Next, that's something that I have the Mr. Core for. So that's uh, another thing that we'll be able to see on, on the Mr. So some really really interesting possibilities with all of these different platforms and i i hope to be inspired to uh, come up with some good game shows because those are definitely platforms that i've been dabbling in on this channel and i want to really go in deeper in terms of how you develop a game for these in the modern times and then after that it's like you know whatever man so i i of course i'm still going to do the occasional one-off demo i'm just not going to be fishing for one to throw together for a weekly video it's just if something inspires me if there's something that i want to do that uh, is interesting to me I'm, i'll go ahead and do it and if it distracts me from my long-term projects you know so be it but sometimes i got to get that stuff out of my system and i'll be featuring that on my channel and then, of course, I I know there's a, a lot of folks that enjoy the Battle Royale and the <laughs> other things where I'm going head-to-head -head with these different machines doing the computational tasks like uh, Mandelbrot set plots. And I, I haven't given up on that. I still had, I had started the 16-bit Battle Royale. I do want to continue that, although that is it's something that's turned out to be a little more difficult to produce than I had initially thought. Uh, it turns out uh, doing things for 16-bit computers are actually a, a bit more uh, involved than with 8-bit computers, even though you, one would think that the development environments were supposed to be easier at that point. It's there, The audience seems to uh, shrink once you look at things like the uh, original Mac, uh, the Amiga, the Atari ST, they were uh, definitely sort of also ran computers, at least in the United States. And there's just not the preponderance of tools and availability for a lot of the things that go into making these, uh, these games and demos that you have for, say, the Commodore 64 or the ZX Spectrum, where you, you really got to the point where computers were no longer something that you, uh, as a, a matter of course, made your own software for, made your own games. They weren't homebrew uh, first like those 8-bit uh, machines were. These were machines that you went and you bought software for because there was a lot of really cool software available that was professionally developed. So, yeah, it makes it a little more difficult to do that 16-bit Battle Royale. I would like to do that someday, but it, the first version of that didn't get a lot of uh, engagement, so I'm, I'm not too tempted to really go into that anymore. And then, of course, uh, video essays, uh, things that I'm, I kind of think about, about uh, technology especially, our relationship to retro technology and homebrew and, and things like that where... I have an idea that I think would make an interesting video essay, sort of like a little something that could be uh, worked as a TED Talk, but I just do it on YouTube. And uh, that those I'll be still doing those too, again, as inspiration strikes me. Not like, oh, man, I've got this hole in my schedule. Uh, I'm going to have to come up with a video essay to fill it because I'm not going to have a demo to put in there. It's not going to be for that reason. It's going to be where I have an idea that I really want to develop into a video essay. And those will, those will happen. So that's, that's what's going to be going on with the channel. I, I hope that you're not too disappointed in all this. And, uh, but mainly, I hope you stick with this channel just like the folks that you're going to see right here. Those are, of course, my uh, patrons. And... Uh, these folks have been sticking through my channel for the last uh, couple years. And as I've gone from doing very simple things to trying to be a real regular content creator and uh, try to push that algorithm and now to pull back and go back to focusing on these projects and coming up with more interesting things that I can share on a less regular basis. 
So I hope you like that too. And if you want to be able to have an early uh, look at the things I'm working on before they go to YouTube to have a little more say on what I'm going to be focusing on uh, or to really just have a, a more e immediate connection to all of this work, the best way to do that is to join this Patreon community uh, at the link here in the description. And you'll get to see all of my videos before they come out to the public. And then there's other things like uh, discounts on games. Once I start uh, selling uh, physical copies of, uh, of some of these games, especially once that Commander X-16 comes out. Chase Vault. Chase Vault's a, a done game. It, it was there at the VCF Midwest, and there will be a physical version of that, even though it's an open source game. Uh, and things like that you'd be able to get discounts for. All right. So again, thanks for coming. If you're not a patron, don't worry. It's totally free to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and you'll really help me out. And then you click that bell to be notified of when my next video comes out and you will see it immediately once that comes out and that's all totally free and you're still really doing me a big favor and supporting my channel and the projects i'm creating all right that's all i got for you for this time and i'm sorry if it's rambly sorry if it was a little weird sorry if it was disappointing but anyway that's what we got for this time all right i'll talk to you again soon Bye bye